are you doing, man? Good. I've got uh, this Winchester rifle that I'm looking to sell. Looks like a pea shooter to me, man. I came to the pawn shop today to sell my Winchester rifle from the 1800s. I'd like to sell it just to help out my grandmother. I'd like somewhere in the, the $3,000 range. So you're not from around here? No, a, a little further south. <laughs> OK. So where'd you get this at, man? It's actually been passed down from generation to generation. This has wound up in my hands. I'm looking to sell it and get some money for it. So what can you tell me about it, man? But it's from the late 1800s. That's what I've been told, anyway. It doesn't surprise me. I mean, that's kind of when these octagon barrels and stuff were really popular. OK. I mean, one of the cool things about Winchester is they're an American company. At one point, we're probably one of the greatest gun makers in the world. Right, OK. Uh, they've got a huge, huge history. One of the most important things about Winchester is this mechanism right here. OK. They can get however many shots off in a rifle, as opposed to the whole dropping the ball down there, packing it right. in. You could actually shoot a shot at a guy, and by the time he was able to load up his musket, you could shoot him five or six times. Sure. Winchester is a huge name in firearms. The Winchester Repeater is known as the gun that won the West. It played a huge role in the hands of Western settlers. Now, this particular gun, on the other hand, isn't a repeating rifle. This was single shot. You'd load the bullet in there, close it up, shoot the gun, kick it back out, throw another one in. So it's kind of an earlier stage gun, but it's still way faster than the old muskets. OK. Um, it's a 22 long caliber, which is really small. I mean, it's one of the smallest bullets they make. And it's made by Winchester. There's just tons of people out there that love them and have to have them. It's great. So, I mean, generally, it's a pretty easy sale. OK, that's good. Any idea of what you're looking to get out of it? 2,500 bucks. All right. I got a few concerns, man. I don't know how old it is. I really have no idea what something like this is worth. If you don't mind, man, let me grab my dad real quick and see if he knows anything more about sure. it. Sure. Hey, Pops, come here real quick. I'm not too worried at all. If someone's expertise is on the rifle and I'm a better chance of possibly getting more money out of it, then that's great. Come look at this gun for me. 22 caliber Winchester. What do you know about it? Um. Sometimes Corey calls me over for a little help, especially with guns. I've tried teaching him, but it just goes in one ear and out the other. That one right there is a Model 1885 Winchester. It was designed by John Browning. He designed the best hunting rifles in the world. The first large machine guns the United States Army had, he designed. Wow. Odd thing about him, this is a million guns named after him, but he was never successful in making guns. John Browning had over 100 different gun patents, but most of his designs were actually manufactured by different gun companies. Even though Browning designed this 22, it was built by Winchester. So what's up? I mean, it's a 22. It's such a small caliber. I mean, what are you going to hunt with it or kill with it? It's... it's not really a hunting caliber. What this is made for is target shooting. When you're competition shooting and you're practicing all day long, there's two things you want, a really accurate gun and really cheap ammo. How accurate was it? With a good shooter and good ammo, you could shoot quarters at 50 yards. Wow. Are you sure, man? Yeah, this particular rifle, extremely accurate gun. The really super rare thing about this is it has an octagon barrel. OK. It was more money, so hardly anyone bought them like that, which makes it a lot rarer and a lot more collectible. OK, cool. And it's in really, really good condition. I mean, it's still the original stock, the original butt plates. The bluing's really, really good. I mean, it's just in really good shape. How old is it? They're easy to date. It's a low five-digit serial number, so early 1890s. How much is it worth? Um. Three or $4,000 we can get out of it? Wow. All right. Nice talking to you. Yeah, thanks. All right, you guys figure it out. Make sure we make money. I love Winchester rifles. This one's in great shape, so I hope Corey makes the right decision. So you heard what he said. I mean, what do you think you want for it? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for $2,500 for it. I'll go 1000 man. You, your father's just said that it's worth three or $4,000. I'm sure you can do better than that. You know, as far as I'm concerned, with Winchesters, people want the bigger calibers. They want the guns that Wyatt Earp used. 1500 if you want it, man. OK, I'll take it. All right, do. Yeah. 
Rich, I'm a right I'm glad my dad was around to look at this gun, because I wouldn't have guessed it was worth so much. Now I'm dying to take it out and fire it to see if it's really as accurate as he says it is. At 50 yards, this gun is just as accurate, if not more accurate, than your AR-15s and everything else. Really? I'm telling you, I can put it within the size of a half dollar anywhere on that target. All right, Pops, you've been talking all day like you're Annie Oakley, so I brought an old man coin. See if you can hit it. We sell those for 60 bucks. Yeah, and I know you're not going to hit it, so that's the point. If you do, I'll pay for it. All right, fine. Hope you got 60 bucks cash on you, plus tax. Come on, Rick, three shots. If you win, I'll even buy you lunch. But if you miss, you're buying me lunch. I'm fine with that. Go put the coin out there. To be able to hit a half dollar at 50 yards, that's stuff people do in movies. There's no way my dad can do it. I mean, it isn't like this guy's out practicing with a gun every day. Dead center, no problem. I don't think you're going to be able to hit it, Pops, not from this far away. I don't know. I just got to sight it in. That's all I got to really do. Strike one. All right, I'm just getting dialed in. I'll get it this time. Oh, strike two. I kind of feel bad for you right now, Pops. You can't hit with your cool gun. Watch this. <laughs> I don't believe it. Damn it. You got lucky there. there. There was no luck involved whatsoever. 60 bucks, and I like Mexican. I don't got any money on me. You just said you'd buy me lunch if I hit it. Not today. Sometimes I can't stand these kids. I know I'm not going to get the 60 bucks for Corey, and Chum's never going to buy me lunch. <laughs> 